Hello everyone. So we have a 25 year old man. He is brought to the emergency department by his roommate who says he has been acting weird for the last two days. He has spent most of the time in room and has not been eating much. There is no headache, focal weakness or sensory symptom. His medical history is significant for untreated HIV and hepatitis C infections. He is febrile, BP normal, pulse is normal, respiration normal, mild scleral ictus is there, and oropharynx normal, no neck rigidity, neural examination revealed no focal deficit. The lab reports are as follows, HB reduce. MCV normal. Retic count is highly increased. Plated count is reduced. Leukocyte count is in the normal range. If you talk about other reports, serum chemistry, BUN is increased. Creatinine is increased. Calcium is normal. This is normal. Bilirubin is increased. Indirect bilirubin is increased. And these are the normal reports. A CT scan with or without contrast reveals no abnormalities. Okay. Most appropriate next step in the management is of this patient is answer is go for a peripheral spear, the first investigation to be done. This is a case of thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. How can we say like this? This first of all, let's learn some basic concept about TTP, then we'll come to know ki why this problem is there. It's a life-threatening disorder of microvascular musculature and there is formation of small basal thrombi that consume platelet and shear the RBCs. It also causes end organ damage, particularly renal and CNS. Okay. Now, this patient in our question has several features of classical pentard. In fact, TTP has a pentard. Thrombocytopenia, the platelet count is reduced. Microangiopathic hemolyticemia, HB is 7.6. Renal insufficiency increased BUN creatinine. Neurological changes weird for the last two days, although there are no focal deficit, but it is their fever. Patient is febrile. So we have all the five features of Pentart. Now, TTP is usually due to acquired autoantibodies to ADMTS13, but it may be heredity, but usually it is acquired. Well, plasma protease that cleave knock a von Willebrand factor of the endothelial surface. We have a proca, of course, this is a type of protease which cleaves the von Willebrand factor. And if the level falls due to antibodies, these multiple accumulate in the endothelial wall. That means von Willebrand factor is not removed from the endothelium, it is there. And that lead to trapping of platelet in the high shearing force and lead to formation of microthrombi. Remember, it usually occurs not in the big arteries, but small arterial capillaries where the high shearing force is there. Now, let me show you a lovely picture. So, this is the von Willebrand factor. This is ADMTS13, and that normally breaks down and cuts into, chops into small pieces. Well, you can say in a day-to-day -day example, we have a knife with which you can chop off the, maybe a cucumber is there, like this, and you can chop off into small pieces by knife. This is the cucumber, we want Billy Brown factor, and this is the knife. In this patient, there is no knife. No knife means this von Billy Brown factor will remain as it is, big one. And we are well aware von Billy Brown factor is the one which can cause attachment to platelet, and now the platelet are all consumed, and that will make the microcirculation clot formation. That's a basic pathophysiology of what happened in TTP. 
typically occurs in young adults, like our patient is at 25 years. But we similar, we have similar disease, so-called hemolytic urine syndrome, which usually occurs in the children, same type of clinical picture, but in children. It is idiopathic, but may trigger by infection like HIV, malignancy, or medication. Most of the time, it is idiopathic. But in our case, it's a well-defined case of HIV. So we can make a clinical diagnosis based on the clinical and lab data data. So we are getting thrombocytopenia and microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. And how can we say we are getting indirect bilirubin level increase and AST, ALT level are by and large normal. Retic count is increased and that raises the suspicion of TTP. So in such cases, most important is to have a peripheral smear. And we can see schistocyte and helmet cell in these patients. Look into this. Schistocytes, helmet cells. Okay. Lovely picture and where we can see even blister cells are seen in some of the cases. How we treat? Without treatment, mortality is very, very high, 90%. It must be treated immediately with plasma exchange. Steroids are often added to this, but that's the main treatment. Is. Let's look into other options. What about bone marrow biopsy? Is useful of unknown case of anemia and thrombocytopenia. Okay. However, this patient has evidence of intravascular hemolysis and organ damage, making TTP much more likely than uh, so bone marrow is not a good investigation. Flow cytometry is done to measure CD4 cell count. Okay, well, this will uh, definitely is useful, but uh, maybe useful for PNH, but not an investigation for TTP. Remember, HIV is the one which is in, uh, causing TTP, and we are investigation for TTP, not for HIV. So, as I told you, obtaining a CD4 count would be useful in this case with HIV, but it's not the first investigation later on. The classic should be addressed urgently. Option C and E, liver biopsy and right quadrant ultrasound. Severe liver disease can cause acute confusion and cephalopathy. However, patient mild AST, ALT elevation or in the normal range almost uh, that is not an investigation. Even indirect in, uh, in bilirubin is only mildly raised, more of a hemolysis. So they are feature of intravascular hemolysis. And so there is no point in doing the ultrasound as the first investigation of liver biopsy, not at all. Of course, I've shown you ultrasound picture that will be done later on, but he's asking what the next best uh, step in management. Moreover, right upper quadrant pain is useful. Uh, there is no evidence of gallbladder. In gallbladder, it's more of a direct bilirubin level are increased. Now, I have one more question for you. In hemolytic anemias, gallstones are formed. What type of gallstone are made? Write down the answer. The answer is this more of a pigment gallstone. Golden line to remember, TTP should be suspected in patients with lab investigation of thrombocytopenia and intravascular hemolytic anemia. Neurological feature and renal failure are often present. Peripheral blood will show evidence of intravascular hemolysis, schistocyte or helmet cells. Well, I hope you liked the session. Just to inform you, we have following courses for you. Smart Medicine, there are 350 hours of pre-recorded video lecture of whole internal medicine. It includes all super specialty and allied subject, covering A to Z, including basic concept about every topic. Second, we have tests and discussion. There are more than 1,000 questions which, with discussion of the questions, sample question and discussion you saw in this session. Now, third thing is Medicine Simplified, which is a textbook of medicine. Harrison is the ultimate book to read medicine, but it is too vast. 
Reading one page of Harrison, you need half an hour. To understand, you need two hours, but you need only two minutes to forget what was written in that page. Then what is the solution? We have Medicine Simplified. It's a textbook of medicine, but so-called mini Harrison. It's a summary of what you need to read from Harrison. The book is available in Amazon also. Now, these three things are more than enough for your MD, DNB Medicine and Family Medicine final exam preparation, need SS exam preparation. You don't need to read any other book. These three are complete in all the aspects. For more detail, you can contact at this number. It's a mobile ad as well as WhatsApp. And this is my personal email ID. Anybody want to reach to me, you can contact me at this email ID. Thank you very much.